Uh, and we are recording. Talk a bit while we're at uh, Wicking, but we're recording. Welcome back to another episode of the Patriot Show. I'm your host, John Gaskell, and with me, my co-host, Jack Thompson. Uh, today, we're just going to be doing another bit of a news round of everything that's recently been happening. Uh, would you like to start, Jack, or should I? You can take the reins on this one. Right. Uh, well, first one, I think it'll probably be a good start with, because anyone that's not aware, this Saturday, I actually went to a rally for justice for Ellie. Uh, we're all quite familiar what happened with her. She was sexually trafficked, abused, beaten, raped. The list goes on for months and months as well. This was going on. Uh, we went to a rally to support her in Manchester. Um, unfortunately, when she's come out and said about these rapists, and I'll link the video on the top again, uh, where she's of the pictures and all that of what's happened to her. It's, it's atrocious. But um, all these injures, where she's literally have a breast cut, her body cut, and beaten for months and all, and they've said that she's just done it herself to frame this group, and that she's mentally ill. I don't believe that someone's beat themselves for months and months just to accuse a group of rape. I don't believe that one bit. And they said she's mentally ill and now charging her with fake rape allegations. And, cause, and the reason they're saying they're allowed to do it is because she brought curfew, even though she has text messages that she received saying that harm would come to her family. Uh, and if she basically didn't go to and meet them and break curfew. So she had no choice. But we, So we campaigned for justice for her on Saturday. Uh, Manchester Piccadilly Gardens. We had a lot of good speakers. Jimmy the Hat, John Lawrence. Uh, there was a woman there as well. I've forgotten the name of her. She was very, very good as well, what she said. There was her and there was Angela, I think it was. So you had quite a few speakers. You had uh, quite a, a decent, reasonable turnout. Unfortunately, the thing that's annoyed me a little with it, though, BLM, with what's happened with George Floyd. I mean, he, obviously, it's wrong what happened to him, but he's a criminal on that, and the entire world, more or less, has gone up in arms about this. I said this in my recent video, Justice for Ellie, when I talked about it. The entire world's gone up about BLM and all that. You see up massive rallies, hundreds of people. But when a girl's been raped, beaten, sexually trafficked for months and spoke out about it, the local papers blamed her for it and named her and even put her address in the paper where she lives. You've had that happen in the mail in Burr and Furnish. You've had, uh, she's been literally trialled for speaking up about rape and uh, sexual trafficking. It's, it's absolutely atrocious that she's been the victim, the survivor of this abuse, who's took the courage has had the guts to speak out about it, has come out there and said it, and what's happened to her? What has happened to Ellie? She is now being pr- prosecuted for speaking out against her aggressors. And that is obviously not something I'm very happy about. The world hasn't gone up in arms about this. Same as what happened with Lee Rigby and uh, people like that. There's not been any major kickoff about that. No uh, world's up in arms, no protests, no riots, no destruction and all that you've had for BLM but when, when this has happened to uh, these people it's a completely different story that's why uh, it's, it's, it's generally a bit disheartening to be honest, it really is Yeah, I saw the videos on your channel uh, about the Justice Fairy uh, demonstration and we need more we need more demonstrations for Ellie, for other people who have went through what Ellie has been through and because it's a problem, it's, it's been a problem for quite some time now, and nothing's being done about it. Uh, the cover-ups within the Labour government, the cover-ups within local police departments, um, it's we need it out like the BLM movement is out. It's on every TV, it's on every newspaper. Everyone is making BLM in the spotlight, but... No one, no famous person. Lewis Hamilton hasn't said anything about the Justice Fairly campaign. Uh, One Direction, I know they've said something about the BLM, but they've said nothing about the Justice Fairly campaign. Um, it's We need to bring the spotlight to the real problem, which is the rape and trafficking of young English girls. But because yeah. they're young white English girls, that the, the spotlight isn't on them. Yeah, it's, it's a, a big problem as well is the media always takes the side 
of the opposition and make us look bad. To put, it's because they're pushing agendas. There's agendas hidden behind BLM, obviously, as we've discussed before. It's being used to push other agendas. What well, seems this isn't usable to push their agenda and would actually support groups that the mainstream media normally don't support, such as parties like ours or Conservative, even UKIP, but Brexit Party, parties like that, it seems to back areas more like that. That is why they won't support it, because they don't want to accidentally gain, gain support for us and take responsibility for their side's mistakes on the political spectrum. And it, it, all parties make mistakes. There's been some in the UKIP over the years, no doubt. Every party's made mistakes over time. Everyone does. But the Labour Party and parties like that, that the BBC and that will support, they won't accept that their areas are doing the worst at, support, at fixing these issues and the cover-ups there. There's been other parties that have done it, Conservative have in places. I'm not saying it's just Labour. But I've got to bear as well. I've talked to some people about Justice Rally and about the campaign. And the thing is that's interesting, even after showing the pictures and the video I made, uh, did you see the one-minute little thing I made about it uh, the, with the song in the background? Yes, yeah. where every, everyone does like that. No, it's a different one. Oh. I'll say, I'll say it's like a minute. It's got the song airplanes in the background and that. It's, uh, it was a lot harder to make than I thought it'd be. I'm not good with technology. But I'll, I'll send it you, yeah, and you'll see what I mean. But I've showed it, people. I'll, I'll put it in the top link in the description, as I said, as well. It's, uh, I think it is restricted, though, so be careful. That's one that's fair enough, though, because the imagery on it. Um, but I've talked to people about it, and I've showed them these. Most of them, obviously, are on our side, but I've found some people, and the Labour supporters, the ones who have, they've even said they're Labour, because they have asked that with curiosity to political party. I normally ask that first uh, as well, before I ease into it. And the one, it's only Labour I've had this from so far, Labour supporters only. I've not had any Lib Dem or just Labour, but who's basically said that... Well, the group that did it were a Pakistani group, weren't they? Well, yeah. Well, how do you know she's not been framing it? Well, it's been happening for months and months. Yeah, but it doesn't mean she couldn't have still framed it. And uh, framed away. I don't believe that someone's done that for months and months just to frame that group. I'm sorry, but no. And this idea of her being mentally ill. I mean, there's hospital records that were going in there and all that. And it's, it's only suddenly mentally ill when she talks out about these issues. If she's had messages off a number that she doesn't know, because they obviously use anonymous numbers, there's obviously someone after her. And I don't get how they can possibly even consider prosecuting her for fake rape allegations. I don't get how they could possibly do this. And there's other people who's come out and spoke up about these now. And this is the problem as well. People get told they should speak up about rape against the grooming gangs, about what's happened, about the abuse. They should speak out. But this is what happens when they speak out. When they speak out, they are then the one who's guilty. They are the ones who committed a crime of speaking out. And that's not how it should be. We shouldn't be prosecuting people who speak out. Yes, there is the argument that some people will make up things like this. There's no denying that. You do get some people who are quite sad and would make up these allegations. You do get that. And it is increasing in society a bit, I'd say, as well, in areas. But people like Ellie and a lot of victims like Ellie or Victoria, another one girl it happened to, or Emily, another girl, I, I forgot the last names of both of them, who it happened to, though. It's, there, there's a lot of physical evidence there, and the police will do nothing. And some of the police officers themselves, after I've personally even met a police officer or two that's actually said this, saying that they've had orders not to mention certain things or link it to any race or anything like that, when certain races are more responsible. And we're not saying it's just one, it's Jimmy the Hat said in his speech, and he does very well with us. I think he's Catholic, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if it's Christian or Catholic, I don't know the exact thing, but it's church, it's church he goes to base, I believe in Jesus Christ and all that. And he said, he talks, yes, I talk as Islamic gangs in these areas. And then he went on to talk about the Blur Twins. Uh, are you familiar with the Blur Twins? Yeah. Basically, two twins who were forced to commit sexual acts towards each other in Kerr. Uh, and they, that was done by people of who believed in Jesus Christ, as Jimmy the Hat said. So he talks about Islamic gangs, because Islamic ones are responsible for certain things in certain areas. And then he talks about, the, he went on to talk about the Christians and the Catholics and churches, about the rapes and abuse going on behind closed doors there as well. So he talks about all, including his own religion. But the Uyghurs get victimised because they'll just find something they can pick us on. And then they'll slaughter us for it. They'll just absolutely run our name uh, into the ground, slam us with racist, sexist, try to scare us out of speaking out. And this type of idea where you're too scared to speak your mind. I mean, what, what happened with Tommy where he's had to evacuate his family and all that because of what's happened. 
uh, where his dad goes Spain, Gibraltar, thank God. Uh, good patriot, though, at least he's still staying in British territory. You know, having Gibraltar back to Spain, just if there's any Spanish viewers, I just wanted to let you know Gibraltar's ours. Uh, sorry, I couldn't resist. Uh, <laughs> so I have to trigger the Spanish, though, just showing off uh, Britain's better. Um, going back into it, though, as I was saying, when you have this system where you're being threatened and scared because you have different opinions and you're there's this type of fear for speaking out about issues. That's not how it should be. If there's something of general concern and safeguarding, we should all speak out about it. But when these things happen with Ellie and uh, Victoria and Emily and all the girls and all the girls and boys that this has happened to, we become the guilty one. We end up as victims becoming the ones who are guilty for speaking up about issues. Yes, I am. I'm Catholic. Uh, there's me rosary beads for anyone that doesn't think I'm Catholic. Um, yeah, I know Jimmy the Hat is Catholic as well. Um, it's happening in every single religion. Uh, Catholicism, Islam, I think that's the name, is Islamic. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's, it's not about religion. It's uh, Let's take the religion away from it for a second. It's about listening to victims uh, and investigating you can't just discount someone's claim if they've got something wrong with them mentally. Like you're saying, Ellie, uh, that they're saying they're blaming mental health for what Ellie's saying. Investigate the claims. Rape is up there, in my opinion, with murder, with armed robbery. It's a very serious crime, and it needs investigating fully. You cannot just discount it like that. You need to talk to everyone that was allegedly, because we have to say that, until it's proven in a court of law, uh, talk to everyone that's allegedly involved, and then find the perpetrators of this crime and bring them to justice instead of labelling Ellie and all the other girls as the perpetrators of this crime. They are the victims here. We have to listen to them. We have to give them their voice. Rape is not being reported as much, and it's because of stuff like this. People are scared to speak out because people are scared that they won't be believed, that it'll just be brushed under the cart, but like the Ellie rape cases, like all the other girls. I think Melanie Shaw is another girl. That... Melanie Shaw, Tom Woods, uh, whistleblowers, right, yeah. Uh, yes. Um, we have to set the precedent. We have to show the rest of the girls that who aren't speaking out that they, that they are, can be safe in speaking out. But we're not showing that. We cannot confirm their protection. We cannot guarantee their safety when stuff like this is going on. Ellie went through ho horrific terror and torture. It, it's awful. And she came out. She said, this is what happened to me. I need help. And we have, not us, but the police, the government, the newspapers have just shoved that back in her face and said, you're the bad guy. When in fact, the people who have done these horrific crimes are probably doing it again to some other little wit, uh, white British girl who was going to try and come out and say, oh, it's happened to me, it happened to Ellie, it happened to all these other girls, but you're still not going to believe us because you're putting them forward before us. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a, a, the British government, the British police are scared to act because they'll be labelled racist or whatever. I don't know if it's that they're being. There could be some kind of financial incentive towards the government not to prosecute these groups. I don't know. To be honest, I want to find out because I want this sorted out as soon as possible. I want Ellie to get our justice. I want all them other girls to get their justice. And I want more and more girls to come out to us to speak, to shout to the rooftops what's happened so we can get it sorted out. That's what I agree. I agree. I believe when you're saying about the police, as I said, it's agen there's different agendas. Of, it's the agendas of the people at top, police commissioners especially, because some of them, police who I've talked to, I have said anonymously, 
that the police commissioners are the ones who've said not to label certain groups and all that. But when you restrict the groups where cats, scrabbers, whatever, that's an issue. Religion does have parts here and there in it, to an extent, I'd argue, yes. And so race does here and there. But the, I, fe I feel more than anything, the problem is, is we're, you've got these politically correct groups, momentum-style groups, basically, getting into positions of civil service. And so far, I mean, Patel, uh, I think her name is, uh, the Conservative. You know who I'm on about, obviously, don't you? She's, she's quite brilliant. She, uh, the reason why she, they didn't try and get rid of her the same way as well, everyone else. With you there. But I'll, I'll let you have your point. I just disagree with you. That should be brilliant. I said in the same way, I, I, won't, I won't finish in there. Patel, uh, if I am near the right person, a conservative, though, who's done a lot against immigration, like, if it's the one, same woman I'm on, woman I'm on about the. Uh, I'm hoping I'm getting a name right right now. If I'm on about the right woman here, good. Uh, just making sure I'm going about the right conservative woman right now. Um, I'm terrible with names. They did try and get rid of her, yeah. I mean, if, what I'm saying is instead of doing it with terms of racism and sexism, they couldn't obviously do that with her because she herself is of different origin. Uh, I don't know if it's through, I think it's through family, like, I don't know if it's her or family, but the thing is they've tried to get rid of her differently. They've got what they've done, they're through people in civil service, I'd say with uh, momentum groups, politically correct groups, those type of systems, in civil service and that, try and make her out to be a bully. They try to get rid of her in a different way by saying she's a bully and stuff like that. They try to get rid of her differently. Because you can't really call someone like uh, uh, a racist, exactly. It doesn't work. It'd be, like in me, it'd be like me telling someone from South Africa that they're racist to... Well, South Africa's not the best example, actually, because they mix a uh, Songhai, for example, or Arabia. Tell them they're an Arabian that they're racist to Arabians. Or someone from Songhai, they're racist to people from Songhai. It doesn't really work that way. So, so they didn't really pull the race card as much with her. They tried a little bit, but it didn't really work, because there was one point, obviously, an argument where Labour and Peach tried. But, uh, but um... And so they mainly try to push her out with bullying, because they're these groups that they've got in civil service, the areas like that, that they've corrupted. Pretty Patel, uh, Home Secretary, uh, she was, in my opinion, an amazing woman. Uh, she's done a lot for immigration. She's put in, uh, in place the point system uh, for workers from the EU, from outside the EU to come into the United Kingdom. They've got to reach a certain level of points in order to actually enter. Uh, I'll give her kudos for all that. But she is doing nothing when it comes to the refugees who are entering this country illegally through the channel on two pound, three pound boats. Uh, Nigel Farage is doing videos every week saying that, oh, another 60 have entered this morning, another 110 have entered this morning. And it is these people who are coming into this country. I, I know it sounds cliche here, but it's true. I can prove it because... They're coming into this country, and two, two times, one in Glasgow, one in, I forget the second town, but they committed a violent act. Uh, stabbing uh, in Glasgow, I believe, was committed by a refugee who was residing in a bed and breakfast, uh, built, well, not built, but located especially for refugees, illegal refugees that come in through the British Channel, come in wherever, through in our waters, in our country. It's these people that are bringing their ideology, their hate towards us. If they hate us, why are they coming over and trying to live here, wanting our benefits, wanting our houses, our jobs? If they hate us that much, why are you, why are you risking your life to come over here? Why are you... Crossing Germany, Ru Ru yeah, Russia, Germany, France, Belgium, Poland, all of them European countries. Why are you crossing all of them countries to end up in the United Kingdom if you hate the West that much? I I, I, I get where you're coming from. I mean, I, I was saying that Patella at an early stage, I was more I'm proud of what she did. But in terms of that, is it's not really something she's doing wrong. It's something she's not dealing with. It's not that she's made a mistake handling. It's the fact that she's not handling it more. That's suppose the main reason I don't criticise her too much on it because she's more than anything. I'm just making do with the fact that she's better than anyone else we've had in a while. 
because our government has been a bit of a cliche, let's say, for quite a while. But um, there's an issue with illegal immigration. Immigration is fine, I say. Immigration, I do believe, is good on its, ba- on its basics. But when mass immigration, as Nigel Farage said, when the leader of UKIP in the European Parliament, we, all, we allow immigration with open arms, but not mass immigration. Immigration is fine. Allowing immigrants, I've not got a problem with. As far as he even exposes the illegal ones, but he is fine with immigration, as he said himself. It's when you can't control, when you've got so many piling in, and when you've got so many coming in who you know of such criminal backgrounds and you know where they're coming from and they illegally get here, that's when it's an issue. We have to obey rules. We can't help everyone. It's like the homeless example I've done before. If you've got £10 per day for yourself and you see an homeless person, you're not going to give them that full £10 because you are a good nine or eight pounds of it because you need to fund yourself to keep yourself going. You have to think logically and not emotionally. It's not now. That's what it's truth. The world is dark in places and you have to think logically or you will not make any difference. You will get nowhere thinking with pure emotion and pure morality. Now, in some areas are more violent than others and it, as well. And that's something we do need to accept the facts of. Now, it's not just that. When you said about crossing through all these countries, it, to seek asylum, if you're coming from a dangerous country, you're supposed to seek asylum in the first safe country you get to. And you've got literally groups, I was watching the documentary on it uh, a while back, where they've come in into Greece, gone a little bit through the small bits of Greece into Bulgaria, because where the area they arrived in, uh, the bit of borderland uh, that connects Turkey, that little thin slice, connects to Bulgaria and Turkey. I-, I wish I knew the name of that state right now. But the point is, they've got in there, they've got to Bulgaria, Bulgaria is safe, Greece is safe, both of them though. Not as high quality life as here, so they've travelled through to get to the three main power, I'd argue the three powerhouses of the EU France, Germany, and of course, Great Britain, the United Kingdom, obviously. We, we are obviously definitely up there. Italy is quite decent as well, to be fair. It's, it's quite reasonable. Now, now that they've got a new president, well done, he's decent. Um, but the, the point is, you're supposed to seek safety in your first safe country, but they go here because it's a better high quality life. And although we don't all want that higher quality of life, when you let so many people in, the security risks that we allow ourselves to, and some do come over just to push forward their own ideology, their own ideals, such as the ones in Syria, the radicalised. And obviously most of them are good people, I won't deny that, a large majority, but there is still so many who are not. And is it worth endangering hundreds or even thousands of people for the sake of this? We, we have an Eng- the English Channel saved us a lot, from not being hit as bad as some of the other areas like France or Germany. It's really has saved our backsides quite a lot and delayed a lot for us. But at the same time, there's still so many coming. We need to deal with it before it comes too late. And it gets called mad for this by saying it's genocide, saying that we're becoming the minority in our own nation. But it's not madness. Look at the statistics, some of the families you get from Syria or Turkey or Iran or Arabia. Look at the statistics. I have about five or six kids. And an average English family will normally have about two or three. Now, when you've got that issue, you see the issue where the ethnic minorities become increasing over the original natives of the land, effectively. Because we are effectively the natives of this land. This is our land. And that's where it doesn't work. Multiculturalism only works when we are the majority in our nation. Some cultures don't mix like the Greeks and the Turks they don't really mix very well Iranians and Iraqis they do not mix very well Ethiopians and Erythian I think it is Erythian I might be announcing their country wrong I'm not the best with Af- African pronunciation obviously but again do not mix well as cultures and you've got to accept this like Pakistani and Indian as well that's a very good example as well can't forget them the list goes on some cultures do not mix well, and you're trying to mix some of these groups here. The violence going towards different groups as a result. It's, it's a very big issue that we need to get resolved. Immigration, immigration, I'd say, is good as long as it is controlled, but this is not controlled immigration when there's nothing being done. If they get here illegally, send them back. If I had my way, if you're trying to cross into this country illegally, this is just my opinion. I know it's not everyone's, but we have a role maybe to stop them for a reason. You get told to turn back. If you do not get turned back, you were trying to land on our, you're trying to get into this country illegally like that, and you're across the ocean, you're trying to get in, and you uh, obviously it's, it's illegal for you to enter. If you've had a warning to leave, it's a big fat Royal Navy vessel, it's supposed to be intimidating for a reason. 
It's like the Indians when they had Somali pilots, pirates shooting at them a while back, uh, a, few, a few years back. There was a event where they tried to attack a naval vessel, and it didn't go very well because that Somali pirate boat didn't get messed around. It just got sunk underneath the ocean when it was told to turn away from Indian waters. They were told to turn around. They didn't. They got sunk. With these immigrants, I'm not saying, obviously, I'm not saying just shoot them on sight, obviously. I'm saying if they are told to leave, if they refuse to leave, they should be pushed back. And then any that's of violence towards them, well, the Coast Guard, the Royal Navy, it's there for a reason. We can't mess around. We need this no tolerance policy. When New York had its massive crime wave, no tolerance policy sorted a lot of it when it had that bad. No tolerance policy might be needed here now. I mean, London, this is, these are statistics from about two years ago. 44.9% British. That's not English, that's not Scottish, that's not Welsh, Northern Irish, that's all of it combined, and the protective eight colonies like Gibraltar, Falklands, list goes on. That's British as, as a whole, 44.9%. That's about two years ago, I don't know why it is now. That's London. We're the minority in our own capital city, a city of immigration or not. 60% British, 50% even I could live, but that, it's less than halfway now. We have to face the facts now with immigration that it has gone too far. We need to start controlling it and ensuring that we remain the majority in our own nation. Yes. Um, when you said immigration contributes to violence, I think if we go back in time a bit to uh, the whole when Jamaica was shipping, well, I, I'm not going to say shipping, people in Jamaica were travelling to this country on the Emperor Windrush uh, ship. Yes, the yeah. Windrush. The Windrush scandal. What? Yeah. And um, people from like the Car Caribbean islands, Jamaica, places like that, came to this country. A lot of them people now, a lot of like their grandkids, their kids, are causing a lot of violence in major towns such as London, Birmingham, Manchester, mainly through gang warfare, and that. Like, I don't know what you call them, uh, J Jamaican gangs, um, stuff like that. It's all all based on drug gang warfare, knife gang warfare, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so when you said that immigration has called, uh, caused violence in this country, there's an example. Another example is the Glasgow, I want to call it a terror attack. The, the media don't want to call it a terror attack, but the Glasgow terror attack when the refugee stabbed uh, them. I think there was two people, don't quote me on that, but the refugee went around with a knife and stabbed people. That is a terror attack, in my opinion. I don't know about you, but... Um, so there's two examples of when immigration has caused violence. Um, I want to move on, because we haven't got long. I want to move on to one... One story that's hit me quite hard uh, this past week. Uh, the PC Andrew Harbour case. Um, it was yeah. about that police officer who was dragged along the road and killed by idiots. Uh, the, the worst than idiots. Scum. Absolute scum. These three boys, I think it was three boys. I've got three names here. Jesse Coe, Albert Boas and Henry Long. Henry Long being the driver of the car. These three, what, if you've seen the trial photos, if you've seen the photos of them entering the dock or, uh, or going into court, actually, sorry, they're smiling. And when they're coming out of court, they're smiling again because they were done for manslaughter. Not murder, manslaughter. All three, uh, Jesse Cole and Albert Boas, were sentenced to 13 years, manslaughter. Henry Long was sentenced to 16 years manslaughter. How is that manslaughter? You're dragging a police officer along the road, on, trapped on your car, and you know he's there, and you're still going. That's intent to kill. That's murder. How has the judge, or whatever, whatever has happened, jury, sorry, how has the jury found them not guilty for murder, but guilty for manslaughter? It's a very good question. I mean, I showed a good amount. I showed a little bit of a post on it on a UKIP Wigan branch page and all that. Uh, it's obviously something I'm uh, very upset about myself. A lot of people have been quite annoyed about that. And it is, if, if he's clearly there, they've seen him there. The fact, the fact that 
the, the, the officer knew what they was going to do, even if they didn't intend on killing him and just hurting him. It's intentional on what they were doing. So murder's fair enough for that. If he accidentally hit him and all that, and, didn't, and it was, uh, that would be a little bit different. But they deliberately knew he was there. And the fact that they've gone in court smiling like they've done nothing wrong, that is where it starts to get annoying for people. So I, I agree with you completely the, that the justice system's let him down. I link it to everything, though, though, the justice system lets us down. With Ellie and the girls who's raped, let us down. With the police officer out there who was killed, let down. The court systems in this country, the justice system in this country, it's absolutely disgraceful. We need a reform of our entire court system at this rate. Our judges especially, because the judges, I'd say, the simple thing I say to a lot of the British judges now is shame on you. Shame on you to the British judges. They're an absolute disgrace to our democracy, to the justice system, to everything. How are these judges even decide these things, how they decide that Ellie is making things up, how they decide that these lads who literally were smiling about the death of this officer, uh, guilty of only manslaughter, how they allowed to be let off more they, with things. This, this type of system here, this tolerance towards crime, I'm all for a tolerant society, but this isn't tolerance here. This is just appeasement, I feel. And appeasement is madness trying to appease groups, trying to be nice to certain people like this. You need to show strength and character. You have to put your foot down and ensure the correct people are, pro- are punished properly. But they're not doing. And the, 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 the justice system, I'd say very simply, has let him down. It has let him down completely. I agree with you there 100%, Jack. His uh, wife, Lizzie Harper, uh, on the after court statement, she said that uh, she only had four weeks with her new husband uh, because they were ma- they, they were married, and then four weeks later he was killed. Um, that that just breaks your heart when you read stuff like that. Um, and I, he hasn't got justice. The family hasn't got justice. Lizzie Harper hasn't got any justice. And um, I hope they appeal against this. Uh, I hope a judge takes on this appeal and gets them done for murder because that is murder. Uh, you've got you've got judges saying, oh, Shamima Begum can come back to the United Kingdom to appeal against her sentence. But you, and you've, it's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous what judges are doing these days. It's just, the just, as you said, the justice system is bonkers. Absolutely it's not fit for purpose. Just, I, could, I could name loads and loads of times that the justice system has let the the public down, has let everybody down. And it's just, it's stupid because it's supposed to be the English justice system. Justice for England. And this is not justice. Shamima is not justice. I, I'm, I'm speechless. I am speechless for once. I don't know what to say. This is the problem. This isn't something we should even need to discuss is a problem. These are things that shouldn't need to be talked about as an issue. But they are issues. And the fact that these things become issues to begin with, even, this should not be a problem. This is not something we should have to sit here and try and get the public support for to deal with these issues. This is not how it should be. But it is. And I don't get why it has to be like this. Why this is how things have had to go. We, we need to make sure that we do we, we follow these things. We need to make change. People need to start standing up against these systems. Because as I said, when I had my Justice Rally Rally, about, about what Peter we got compared to BLM and that, people on our side just don't want to speak out because of the employment but the risks, the risks of friendship loss. I've lost a lot of people over time doing the stuff I do, uh, definitely. And the amount of, I mean, I've constantly got threats and all that. And uh, I mean, it was, as I said, there was even that Facebook page that said all that stuff about I me. Mean, I've had, I have death threats uh, on a reasonable amount of time and threats to do harm to me because of uh, what I do and all that and what I get called and all that. And it, it does get to at times. I did a video against needing to stop this hostility for different views and all that. I did, I did a video on it uh, about the political hostility in the club. And there's no need. There really isn't a need for this. But this is how the world has gone. We can't speak up about issues, though, and we are because of the fear of it. And this is the problem. 
they all need to become lions and speak out and not sheep following the mass. But people are scared. And I can't really blame them. I mean, Tommy, of course, has had to get his family out of here, as I said, because of the arson. Uh, where they tried to burn his house down with his family in it, his kids and that, who weren't even involved with what Tommy does. That that type of stuff is 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 not it's not really how it's supposed to be. It really isn't. This is not something we should have to talk about. This is not something that should be an issue. But the fact that we have to we still, as I said, we have to sit here and try and speak up for so many people who are scared to speak out about these issues because the fear of the consequences of speaking up. The court system, I'd say, is one of the main things right now, especially with the things I've witnessed lately with the police officers, uh, what's happened with uh, PC... What's his name again? I always forget his Andrew, damn name. Andrew Harper. Harper. Um, I, was, I know it's Harper. I just I always forget his first name. I, I knew it was Harper or Harpy. I didn't want to say it wrong. It was one of the two. I'm, I'm not good with names, as I said. I apologise. I'm terrible with names. I, I had to write yours down on the first episode just to remember your last name. I'm terrible with names. Um, as I said, PC Harper, he's been let down with his family, his wife. There was hardly any time they were together. And then with, on top of that, with uh, PC Harper and that, you've had uh, the, the Ellie situation. Where, and there's other girls, such as uh, Emily and Victoria, as I said, that's been let down. You've had other, a variety of other situations as well that have occurred with uh, Lee Rigby, a soldier who was killed in the streets. You've had the, you've got the immigration situation. You've no justice. Uh, the, the, there's no justice in this country at all anymore. And I do believe with what we've talked about today, I'm more persuaded than ever because I'm clearly not alone on this. We're both clearly not alone on this. The courts are one of the main things I think that do need to address. I can't really blame the police commissioners and that. And to be fair. It's not just that. One thing I always miss out, I feel, right now, and I'm realising I need to start mentioning this even more now, more than ever. The justice system, the judges, the judges are the ones that need to be tackled. They are the main ones now. I feel we should definitely put a lot more pressure towards the judges to actually represent the people. Because there's no public servants at all now anymore. Politicians, I don't believe, serve us correctly. The police commissioners and the police are heavily biased and not really there for the people. You've got uh, the civil service I don't trust judges I don't trust the people that are supposed to represent us and be there for us, we just can't trust them relying on anymore that's the main issue I'd say we need to address now definitely um, yeah we need to ad address it, we need to shout it out of the rooftops, we need to campaign justice for Ellie, justice for Andrew Harbour, justice for Britain in my opinion Justice for the British people. Justice for me and you. Justice for everyone that's trying to get their voice out there. Justice for people who are campaigning endlessly for a brilliant cause. Justice for Britain. I said it again. Justice for Britain. Perfectly said. A new, new hashtag. Oh, I want to see people in this video do that. If you're still in the video at this point, hashtag justice for Britain. We're going to start doing that. We're going to try, we're going to make our own hashtag here. Hashtag justice for Britain. But it's time for us to do that. It's time to do that. Uh, it's it's we we it's, it shouldn't be a thing as I say we need to talk about. This is what it is. The English people, the British people in general, are becoming the victims in their own country. It needs to stop. I mean, Scotland especially right now. I mean, I'm sure you've heard of Nicola Sturgeon's uh, new law she was trying to put through. With the it was basically bans free speech effectively in Scotland. There's new laws she tried to push that. They said cut down all significantly what people can say and can't say. Uh, there's new laws like that they're trying to do. There's no justice for the people. It's landed elite system that the landed elite, the uh, the rich, the the ones in these positions no longer represent us, and people just vote for the groups that they feel. Uh, would basically, yeah, they're the best option. They pick the best of two evils now because it's the only choice they have. Uh, for example, I, don't get me wrong, I like Boris. He's got a good amount, anyway. Well, lately, COVID, he hasn't done, he hasn't done the best for that. I mean, Brexit, I liked him a lot, but he's, uh, for Brexit, he, he did a decent amount. But more than anything, he was just a better option than Labour. But that's why it was. It was Labour versus Conservative because the other parties don't really get much say in this system. As I said, I'm always proportional rep. Even a New Zealand system where it's 50-50, 50 proportional, 50 what we have, that's what we need, a thorough system where we get represented. Because this system of even where we have, who we have represented, so it's not even just in elected positions, civil service positions, local positions of local government. 
a large majority just uh, there to represent. They're just there for the paycheck. It's just there for that massive amount of expenses that you get. And that's an issue. That really, that really is an issue in the modern system now. So we need to get justice for everybody. We need to start making sure that we are no longer the victims in our own country. That we, the people, justice for the British people. Justice for us, the victims. I, I had a sign, I remember I was called racist from Manchester a while back, where I held a sign saying, um, justice for the English. And I wouldn't say that's racist by this point. I'd say the fact that the English people have become victims, where we are threatened for different points of view, as I said. We're not just threatened, but actually attacked in multiple occasions, such as the Tommy Robinson arson attempt. That was, uh, oh, oh, no, I shouldn't have said that word. The, the YouTube are going to be angry with me now. Facebook police will be on me as well. Oh, great. Um, anyway, the point is, I'm saying... This is not how it should be. The threats, the violence, even the actual attacks on the British people, the English people, Scottish, Welsh, Welsh what, Northern Irish, whatever. British people in general. That's, we are the victims now in our own country. And the fact that this is where this has got to, it should have never got to stay. And there's a man, uh, I don't know if you've heard of him, Enroch Powell, I think it is. Enroch, Enrich, uh, he warned us about this years and years ago. And I won't deny, in the time, I probably wouldn't have believed him about then. But this is why we need to listen to everybody, because if only we did listen to him, because he was right. He was. But he was blacklisted, yeah. like, like Tommy's being blacklisted, like many other people are being blacklisted, for speaking the truth, for trying to get a change in this country. You're just shoved off to the side. Your house is set on fire. You're silenced. But yeah, Enoch Powell was right. And you know what? All this statue, Malarkey. If, if there's a statue we need, it's a statue of Enoch Powell. Because he was right. And we're never going to forget I... Enoch Powell. Because his speech, the Rivers of Blood speech, has been labelled racist, xenophobic, everything. But that speech was what he predicted... It was back in the late 60s, I believe. Late 60s, he said, in 10, 15 years of time, rivers of blood. And it was a bit late. Well, I'd, I'd follow him on that. But yes, that's what's happening right now. And we need someone like Enoch Powell to go around uh, Britain and say, we need to stop right now. Otherwise, it's just going to get out of hand. And we won't be able to do anything. But our hands will be tied. We will be, like you're saying, in our capital, we will be the minority in Britain soon enough if we, do, if we do not do anything. We need to rise up now. We need to be the lions instead of the sheep. We need to voice our views. We need justice for Britain. I feel like Winston Churchill. <laughs> But you, you're getting the spirit though. I can hear it in your voice and all. You're starting to get the proper charisma behind you. Hold on to you. Well, we make. I feel we've made a very. We're doing very well here. We've made some very brilliant points so far, and I believe that this is this. This we've got the main subject of what we want right now. Is is there anything else you say we should add to the video uh, that you I can think, think I of? Think we've covered this week quite well. Uh, I don't yeah. think I've missed anything else. There's nothing. But uh, I feel that this is probably the best not to leave it on with this thing. I think we should, next week's or the week after the video, we should, if we've missed anything, we should just bring it up then. Yeah, I agree. Because next week we'll have that guest. Uh, not going to name him yet because one, I may have forgot the name. And secondly, it keeps it a surprise for you. Yeah. Anyway, I think that'll be it for this video. Don't forget anyone that's still watching as well. Hashtag justice for the British. I want to see that in the comments. Come on, Peter, let's get it out there. Hashtag justice for the British. That'll be all for this video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.